sickness amongst our miners, obviously global growth concerns, but they did, I suppose, um, ignore, if you like, a bit of a rally in metals. It was all about the jobs numbers today. We were reacting to the Friday non-farm payroll numbers out of the U.S. market, but it was a very low volume day. We saw markets around Asia closed, the Shanghai Composite was closed, China closed, Hong Kong was closed, and South Korea was closed. So extremely light volumes going through our market. Only $3.6 billion worth of stock being traded. So it was hard to read too much into the performance of our market today. We did see all sectors trading lower, with the exception of the utility space. So it does look like investors still positioning themselves defensively. But if we have a look at the worst sector, it was consumer discretionary. And it's worthwhile drilling into this sector because out of the 26 stocks which make up this sector, not one of these stocks managed gains today. If we have a look, 10 was down by 2.9%. We saw uh, Fleetwood down by about 2.8%. JB Hi-Fi down by 2.7%. So that consumer discretionary sector coming under a lot of pressure before the interest rate decision tomorrow. We did see a bit of takeover speculation that helped. Foster's was up by 2% and it was a very interesting day in terms of technicals. We reached a new low for this correction at 4,550 points and it's interesting to see these technical levels being recept uh, respected because if we look at that number, that was the uh, low that we saw in the November correction which saw a fall of 5.5% on the market. So if we do see this, uh, this support level hold, that would be a good sign for the market. Today we bounced off 4,550 points, so a short-term positive for the market. But of course, if we do see this area cracked in the next week, then we could see uh, the next support level, 4,477 points. The corporate story is out because there were a few today, Julia Lee. Obviously, the, the official, if you like, Demerger, Tab Corp and, and Echo Entertainment, differing fortunes on the day. If we do have a look at Tafcorp and Echo Entertainment, I guess the first day of uh, the debut uh, as separate companies, separate entities on the market. If we have a look at the value that may have been unlocked for shareholders, I mean, Tafcorp on the last day of trade as a merged company on Friday traded at $7.72. If you add up the two companies coming to $7.71, so not too much of a difference there. Of course, a lot of interest in Echo Entertainment today because Echo is the one that's going to hold the casino assets. That's the new South Wales Star, uh, Star City Casino as well as the three Queensland casinos and we know there's hu a huge amount of uh, refurnishment going over there at the moment. One billion dollars for Star City, 625 million dollars for those Queensland casinos and one second completed there's uh, potential upside to flow through from that investment. Of course news uh, from the Australian Financial Review that James Packer may hold um, just less than five percent of uh, Tabco also helping to stoke takeover speculation on Echo Entertainment. Crown, of course, has been long being touted as a potential acquirer of uh, Echo Entertainment. And one of the key barriers, I guess, was the wagering license because if you bought, bought the full Tab Corp company previously, you would have uh, had the wagering license, which would have been a problem for a company like Crown. So a bit of takeover speculation, but altogether we saw uh, Echo Entertainment opening at $4.35. It did hit higher than $4.50 during the day, but by the close, $4.36. Julia Lee, uh in terms of an outperformance today, Aluka, the outlook for uh, a couple of their minerals, if you like, really helping to boost uh, all their shares today. Aluka is a company which has been having difficulty keeping up with customers' uh, demands and that's always a good sign in terms of pricing and we saw that flowing through today. The titanium dioxide market, very tight at the moment. Titanium dioxide is mainly used for pigments, so in things like paints and it does look like in the second half they've managed to see price increases of between 70 to 75 percent. Not only that, Zircon is um, a key market of Aluka as well, it's a key miner of Zircon. If we have a look at Zircon, this is an area where it hasn't been able to cup, uh, keep up with customers' demand. So expecting to see a price increase here of between 30 to 35 percent. Now this company also gets royalties uh, from area CBHP, Billiton and Iron Ore Outlook, the Iron Ore Outlook in the medium term still looking very positive. So it does look like all three key areas lining up for this company and the stock was up by 7.3 percent. So a great day on a day where the market didn't do too much. Yeah, good news for a stock.